Since the dawn of organized warfare, fire has been employed on the battlefield with deadly results. But in World War II, fire in the form of incendiary bombs reached a new level of lethality by literally transforming cities into hell on earth. General Sherman gave us the aphorism, war is hell. But it wasn't until decades after his death that war reached levels of hell that he could not begin to fathom. In the Second World War, Air Force commanders had a wide range of specialized bombs at their disposal. However, if the strategic goal was to destroy an entire city, the preferred bomb was the incendiary. An incendiary bomb typically is composed of a lot of very small devices weighing only a few pounds. They're designed to start a fire and more importantly to start a fire that turns into a much bigger fire. Weapon, incendiary bomb, primary incendiary fuels, thermite, magnesium, napalm, and phosphorus. The World War II incendiary bomb resembled a long stick filled with fuel, which was weighted down at one end to provide somewhat accurate delivery. The bomb was either dropped as a single projectile or packed inside a casing, which would break apart before impact, dispersing hundreds of incendiary sticks in a cluster. Upon impact, the heat-producing chemical activated the incendiary fuel. One large bomber could carry over 3,000 four-pound incendiary sticks, capable of starting thousands of fires. Under ideal conditions, these fires would join together and create a firestorm. In the early months of 1945, Nazi Germany was on the verge of collapse. Russian troops coming from the east, coupled with their allies coming from the west, planned to squeeze Germany into submission. However, the Germans have just launched the Ardennes Offensive, which shocked the socks off of all the Allied leaders. It was that shock which uh, prompted uh, the change in the bombing campaigns, particularly the one that led to Dresden. Britain had two strategic goals in attacking the city of Dresden, Germany. One was to aid the Russian invasion by disarming the city's communications. The second was to destroy German morale by killing large numbers of civilians. The British shifted fundamentally to a policy of what they called area or morale bombing. As one British uh, writer put it, the campaign of uh, morale bombing was really a cosmetic term for massacre. Winston Churchill's command to use incendiaries against Germany was carried out with great success by Royal Air Force Commander Arthur Bomber Harris. Harris was the true believer. Harris felt that uh, attacking German cities would not just inconvenience the Germans, it would bring them down. On the night of February 13, 1945, 250 British Lancasters flying at low altitude attacked Dresden with the intent of creating a firestorm. The British really perfected the recipe for incendiary attack. They would first send in a small group of planes as pathfinders to mark the aiming point. Behind those planes came the main force, which were aircraft loaded with high explosive bombs, which were designed to blow the roofs off of buildings and otherwise shatter the structure to make them uh, kindling for the large bundles of incendiaries that followed. And this worked to perfection in creating large fires. During the first raid, which lasted 15 minutes, over 300 tons of thermite incendiaries were dropped on Dresden. Minutes after the bombardment stopped, thousands of fires came together to form a massive firestorm. That fire thrust up a fountain column of incandescent gases and burning uh, debris which spread the fire. But more importantly, it acts like a bellows. It sucks in air and oxygen into the fire at winds of gale force, which frequently will suck individuals back into the fire. Temperatures inside the core of the firestorm reached upwards of 1,500 degrees Celsius. You had the most horrific scenes of, you know, thousands of women, babies trapped 
in these infernos with these superheated 100 mile an hour winds burning them up. Ten square miles of Dresden were completely destroyed. The number of people killed is unknown, but estimates range from 25,000 to 40,000. As horrific as the burning of Dresden was, it was only a taste of what was to come. Less than a month later, the United States began firebombing Japanese cities, utilizing a new incendiary fuel called napalm. The Army Air Force realized early in the war that their two incendiary bombs relied upon either rubber or magnesium, both of which were in terribly short supply. They came up with a compound of uh, naphthenic and palminic acids which were contracted to be called napalm, which was mixed with gasoline and produced by far the most effective incendiary device of World War II. Napalm burns with extreme intensity, and its stringy and sticky consistency allows it to spread more effectively than other incendiaries. By March of 1945, Curtis LeMay, in charge of the 21st Bomber Command, concluded that high-altitude daytime bombing was simply not accurate enough to be effective against Japanese targets. Curtis LeMay directed his crewmen to fly not in the daytime, but at night. Much of Japanese industry was uh, cottage industry scattered out in the cities, and so LeMay aimed at the cities themselves. Burn the cities down and you would destroy Japanese war industry and at the same time uh, you might so horrify the Japanese leadership that it would give up. On March 9th, 330 B-29 bombers took off from the Mariana Islands headed for Tokyo, Japan. After two hours of the bombardment, the wooden city of Tokyo was engulfed in a firestorm. These fires were so hot that they would literally ignite the clothing of individuals as they were fleeing. What was particularly horrifying was a lot of the women wore what they called air raid turbans around their heads, and the heat would ignite those turbans like igniting the wick on a candle to start uh, consuming them with flame. The aftermath of the incendiary bombings on the evenings of March 9th and 10th led to an estimated 100,000 Japanese killed. The night raid against Tokyo was the most devastating single raid ever carried out by aircraft in any war to include the nuclear bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Once the success of that campaign became clear, the Army Air Force then simply got out of the list of the 180 largest Japanese cities and began firebombing every single city on that list uh, to produce an end to the war. At the end of the firebombing campaign, 64 Japanese cities and nearly 200 square miles were burned to the ground. The final death toll was estimated at 200,000. Technological advancements in precision-guided missiles eventually put an end to incendiary carpet bombing. But the legacy of the Allied firebombing campaigns against Germany and Japan, and the tremendous loss of life associated with them, firmly established the incendiary bomb as one of the deadliest weapons ever used in battle. In 1980, a United Nations convention banned the use of napalm and other incendiaries against civilian populations. The United States refused to ratify the treaty, and continues to use in